Good morning and welcome to Puppet News Update. I am your host, Irma Jean Newsletter. <laughs> so this week, we have five new holidays in store for you, starting out with today's holiday, National Lemonade Day. Ah, yes, delicious, sweet lemonade. Oh, I do so love it. Next, National Beach Day, well, that's tomorrow, where you can go and enjoy a beautiful walk along the beach or frolic through the waves. Yes, and then Monday is World Distance Learning Day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Distance learning? How did they put that together so quickly? <laughs> but distance learning has actually been around for quite a while in different forms. It's just this year it's being used quite extensively in many places, yes. So then, the next holiday after that we should be celebrating is on Wednesday, and it's World Coconut Day! Oh, coconuts are so good! They're good in so many things. You can have coconut wrapped shrimp, or you can have um, candy bars with coconut and chocolate and sometimes almonds. You can toast them up and put them into all kinds of things. Put them on cakes. Oh, coconut is delicious. Last but not least, on Friday is National Wildlife Day for all of our furry friends who live in the wild. And we shall be meeting a few of those and hearing a bit about their natural habitats. So without further ado, National Lemonade Day. Hello, okay, so I'm going to start us off. Today is National Lemonade Day. <laughs> Whoa, okay, first of all, personal space. Thank you. Secondly, what did you say? Whispered in my ear. <sighs> it's not lemonade day. It's not lemonade day. Well, then what day is it? It's lemon juice. Ju lemon juice? drinks lemon juice. That would be nonsense. I know. So, so why do they have a national holiday for lemon juice? I don't know. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Nobody likes lemons. Who would ever just come and eat a lemon? Do you see that tiger? She's eating a lemon. She's, she's eating a lemon. That, is that it can't be good, right? I mean, it's yeah. got to be way too sour. No, I'm good. She, she just took the lemon. Yep. And she's she's eating it? Yep. But... The, what? Uh, uh. Huh. Ah. Nice little lemon. You, you're welcome. That can't be delicious. What is she doing? I... I don't know, maybe she really likes to celebrate National Lemon Juice Day, but the, she ate the lemon. Yeah, that's weird. I'm gonna go set up for my segment. Okay. Uh, well, uh, happy National Lemon Juice Day, everyone. <laughs> I just can't comprehend what just happened here. All right, ha <laughs> ha. Well, next up, uh, Wanted Brune will tell us about National Beach Day. Ha ha ha. Ha. Hello, I am Juan Tiburon, shark of stage and screen. <laughs> Ole. Now, I am here to talk to you today about National Beach Day, which is happening tomorrow. If you did not know, beach is where the land meets the sea. See? <laughs> and the sea is where I live. Yes. <laughs> it is a wonderful, magical place where two worlds collide. Now, the great thing about beaches is that there is so much fun to do. You can go surfing in the sea. You can go swimming. You can pet the fish if you can get close enough. <laughs> they are friends, not food, no? <laughs> and you can also play on the beach itself. You can build sand castles. You can stretch out and get some sun. You can collect seashells. Oh, it is a wonderful place. Now, before we proceed any further, I must say, if you live in Florida, Louisiana, or anywhere else that is being affected by hurricanes, do not go to the beach. Save it for another time. I know, I know, I know. You wish to celebrate National Beach Day because who would not? But you must celebrate in your heart until it is safe to go to the beach because a hurricane makes a beach no fun. Mm. No fun at all. So, 
if you live there. Do not go to the beach. In fact, get away from the beach. Go somewhere safe. But if you live somewhere where there is a beach and it is safe and you're allowed to go there because, of course, there is a pandemic. But if you can be there and you can be socially distanced and safe, go and get some sun and some sand and some sea. Sea! <laughs> Ole! Thank you, Wantebrun, for telling us about beaches. Oh, they do sound so fun. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm still a bit distracted about those lemons. Lemon juice, dear, really, it's just, oh, it's so strange. Anyway, huh, okay, back to the show. Oh, pay attention, Emma. <laughs> okay, so next up is World Distance Learning Day, and Dragon is going to tell us all about it. Thank you, Irma Jean. So I'm here to tell you all about World Distance Learning Day. Okay, okay. So I know I was thinking the same thing that Irma Jean was thinking, which is, whoa, how do they put a national holiday together so fast? But the thing is that distance learning has actually been around for like a couple hundred years. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. It actually started back in 1728. And you're like, whoa, they didn't have internet back then. How did that work? <laughs> I know, right? But let me tell you. So back in 1728, Caleb Phillips was advertising his, a way of teaching his um, shorthand. He taught shorthand and he advertised in the Boston Gazette, which is the newspaper, which is like a paper thing that brings you your news. It's kind of like blogs and online. Anyway, it's a thing. Um, anyway, he was advertising there that he could deliver lessons by mail on a weekly basis. So people didn't even have to go to a classroom. They could be from like anywhere and they could still get his lessons. And that was the first distance learning, right? It's so cool. And then someone else named Sir Isaac Pittman, he took it one step further in England in the 1840s. He was also teaching shorthand because that was a thing back then that a lot of people needed to know. But his students would send him a postcard that showed what they were working on so that he could then correct it and send it back to him. So then it was like a two-way thing and it just worked way better. And um, yeah, eventually the Phonographic Correspondence Society was established and it became an official thing. Colleges by 1873, they started operating those kinds of schools and lots of people were able to learn from a distance. Of course, now there are all kinds of distance learning options and there have been for a while. A lot of colleges can be done online and have been able to be done online for a while. A lot of your classes, you don't have to be in an actual classroom. Pretty cool, right? And now, of course, now that we have the pandemic, a lot of schools are really getting the hang of it between doing stuff through Google Classroom and having Zoom lessons and all kinds of stuff. It's really amazing how much we can do now. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it can be kind of stressful for you, for your parents, for your teachers, for everybody. It can be a lot harder than what we're used to. But remember, we're still working on it and we're still improving it and it is getting better and better all the time. And better to be safe and be able to have some school than to have to be in danger, definitely, always. Safe is always better. So be kind to yourselves, be patient with yourselves and be kind and patient with your parents and teachers too because everybody is doing their best. And maybe give a big thank you to your teachers on Monday for World Distance Learning Day because they have done a lot of amazing stuff and they have had to do it on the fly without very much practice and without very much preparation at all. So way to go teachers, you are awesome. And hang in there students, <laughs> you got this. Thank you, Dragon. That was most informative. I had no idea that distance learning had been happening for so long. Oh, 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 oh. It can be exhausting though. Do hang in there. <laughs> all right, so our next holiday is on Wednesday. Coconut day, as you can see here from the coconut in the picture. <laughs> oh, coconut is delicious. Let's head to the kitchen and see what delicious coconut treat bear is whipping up for us today. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So this week is World Coconut Day. Oh, coconuts are so good. You can use them so many different ways. So I decided that just for fun, this week I'm gonna make Grandmama Bear's favorite kind of milkshake, toasted coconut. <laughs> now the real main ingredient to toasted coconut milkshakes is, uh, well, toasted coconut and uh, ice cream. So I decided that I wanted to use chocolate ice cream and I'm also gonna add a little bit of caramel and a little bit of chocolate chips to make it extra scrumptious. So it's a little bit like, um, I don't know, like a candy bar milkshake in there. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you have to do is uh, get your shredded coconut like we have right here in this bag and you gotta toast it. 
Now, if you're doing a really big amount of coconut that you're toasting, you want to use the oven. But if you're only doing one or two cups like we are, the best way to do it is on the stove. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put it in a skillet and you're going to put it over medium low heat and then just kind of stir it until it starts to get brown and toasty. You don't want to leave it sitting there for too long because it might burn. It browns up pretty quick, but you know, let's skip ahead. And thank you, of course, to my lovely assistant with the opposable thumbs. <laughs> Good one. Oh yeah. Nice and toasty, just how we like it. Thank you, lovely assistant. Let's see what's next. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of that chocolate ice cream right there. And we're going to put it over here in our blender. And we're going to make a nice big recipe because between you and me, I haven't gotten to have any of these treats yet. So baby, if I make enough, even if I share, there'll still be some left for me. <laughs> ah, genius. Okay, so now we got a few real nice big scoops of chocolate ice cream in there. And now we just have to add the coconut and whatever other things you like in there. I'm going to add some caramel and some chocolate chips, too. Oh, yum. All right, so as you can see, we've got the ice cream and the caramel and the toasted coconut and the chocolate chips. Now, if we want to make it a milkshake, there's one more very important ingredient that we need to add to make it nice and liquidy. That, of course, is milk. Okay, now we've got our milk in there and we're ready to blend. I know it looks pretty weird right now. You probably wouldn't want to eat it like that. But once we mix it up, it's going to be delicious. Oh, those look great. And I like to put a little extra toasted coconut up on top just as a little garnish. <laughs> and look, I made three. One for me and two to share. Hopefully that means I'll get some this time. <laughs> okay, they're all done. And there should be enough this time, I think. <laughs> Who wants the milkshake? <laughs> Ooh, look, thanks, babe. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. I'll take one. You are also very welcome. Ha! And one left for me. I knew Ooh, it. Perfect for after eating a lemon. <gasps> but, but, do people who eat lemons also eat regular food? I have severely miscalculated. Maybe there's some more in the blender. Um, lovely assistant? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Are we out of straws? My face doesn't fit. Someday. Back to you, Ermagine. Oh, poor bear. He never seems to be able to manage to get a bite of his snack, does he? Well, if you can't eat it, bear, I will. <laughs> Over here. Ah, oh, anyway, all right. So next up is National Wildlife Day, and Tiger is going to introduce us to some of our fellow puppets who are also wildlife creatures, and we shall learn a bit about them and their habitats. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So I'm here today to talk about National Wildlife Day. Oh, and I'm so excited because you know why? I am a form of wildlife. Tigers are wild animals, and therefore we're part of wildlife. I know. <laughs> now, most of us are not accountants, but what can you do? I'm a pretty special tiger. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about tigers. Now, we used to have a lot more places where we roamed around. Like, you could find tigers in Central Asia. You could find us in Bali. Oh, Tropical islands, my favorite. You can find us in the Himalayas, you can find us in China, all kinds of places. But nowadays, well, tigers are endangered. I know, it's so sad. We should be running this place, right? We would be so good at running the world. But instead, there's just not that many of us anymore. So the, the places you can mostly find us now, well, there's some temperate forests in Siberia where you can find us, and sometimes you can find us in tropical rainforests like in India. So uh, if you see a tiger, be nice. Uh, maybe don't go near it because it's not safe, but also try not to kill it because we're endangered. Ugh, I know, it's the worst. But in good news, tigers are the biggest kind of cat. I know what you're thinking. What about lions, king of the jungle and all that, blah, blah, blah. Nope, we're bigger. Ha <laughs> ha, I know, we are really the kings, if you ask me. So uh, we usually are orange or sometimes white with beautiful black stripes as you can see. Oh, yes magnificent. Anyway, and uh, we meet 
we eat meat for the most part, although I would not say no to some coconut wrapped shrimp. <laughs> ah, or a uh, milkshake bear. You know, if you still have that extra, <laughs> you can send it my way. Anyway, um, so that's a little bit about tigers. I don't want to get into too much detail because we got to hear from a few of our friends. So next up, let's hear from Wolf. Hi, everybody. I am Wolf. And as you can see, I am a wolf, a gray wolf to be specific. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about wolves because we are pretty cool. So we have been around for a long, long time. Now recognizable wolves as you would see us now and recognize as a wolf have been around for at least 20,000 years. That's a long time. And did you know that dogs are descended from wolves? Yeah, your furry little friends in the house used to be more fierce predators like me. <laughs> I know, I'm so mighty. Now, something cool about wolves is we travel in packs. They're like our family. We are very family oriented. And in fact, when we find a mate, we mate for life. That sweetheart is our sweetheart forever. Now, if you know any cute girl wolves, I am currently in the market. I'm looking for my own companion for the rest of my life, my own little honey, my own little furry sweetheart. Oh, and if you see one with blue eyes, that's my favorite. I just love those big blue eyes and pretty shiny fur. Oh yeah, the beautiful girls. Oh, is it any wonder that when we fall in love, we fall in love for life and we raise our cubs together and we're just very family oriented and it's extremely cool. Now, there's not a lot of us around anymore, but the ones that are out there, you can sometimes find us places like Yellowstone and other national parks. In fact, they introduced a bunch of wolves to Yellowstone to help the ecosystem and balance things out, and boy, did it work. We know what we are doing. We are good at what we do, and we are fabulous looking while we do it. So, respect the wolves. Keep your distance because we can be dangerous and definitely don't try to get between us and our cubs. But we are very loyal and loving pack animals who take care of each other. Hmm, wolves, we are the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi everybody, so I'm here to talk about bears. Now, uh, I'm still feeling a little disappointed about my uh, milkshake, but um, I'll get over it because I'm excited to tell you about me. So I'm a brown bear, and if you didn't know, brown bears are the California state animal. So yeah, look at me go. They love me here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, brown bears are pretty big. They're not as big as grizzly bears. You know, my cousin's a grizzly bear, and he's kind of a bully. He's not that nice. He's like, oh, I'm so big. And I'm like, yeah, you're big. Who cares? But I know how to cook. So there. Take that, Todd. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, brown bears, there's a lot of us. We tend to be in places like Eurasia and North America. We like forests. We don't like to be too hot because, you know, we got this big bushy fur coat. Um, but bears, we're pretty cool, actually. Um, we have some of the biggest brains compared to our body size, and we've actually been known to use tools. Yeah, we can use, the, like, rocks to break things open, and, and we're, we're a lot smarter than we look, so, uh, you gotta be careful when you see a bear. Now, especially when you see a mama bear with her cubs, do not get close. I know, those cubs are so cute. They're really, really cute. Like, I tried to go... My aunt, her little boy, he was just so cute, and I wanted to go give him a hug, and she was like, Rah! she almost took my face off. I was like, okay, Aunt Jenny, jeez, I just wanted to say hi. So, I mean, don't get between a mama bear and her cubs, because as cute as they are, she will try to rip your face off. So just don't do it. If you see a bear, it's better just to try to quietly move away. And if you can't move away, um, you want to make yourself real big and scary, or you just want to kind of like... Mm get real, real small and cover your neck. It depends on the kind of bear. If you come across me, chances are you'll just kind of take my milkshake and that'll just be that. So I'm, I, I, I'm a safe bear, but a lot of bears aren't. So be careful when you see them out there. But you know, feel free to take pictures and admire from a safe distance because I know we're beautiful. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Thanks for helping out. Um, so that's just a few of the different wildlife animals, uh, the ones that we have here who are part of the puppet team. But of course, there's all kinds of wildlife out there. So, you know, if you see a pigeon or if you see a raccoon or if you just, you know, you happen to go to the zoo and see a giraffe, you can be like, hey, guys, happy wildlife day because we're all part of the wildlife. So, you know, whatever wildlife you see on Friday, tell a hi and say, way to go, way to be wildlife and maybe go and look it up on Google and find out what it's all about. Because that's what life is all about, learning and getting to know cool new facts. <laughs> okay, back to you, Irma Jean. <laughs> Wolves and tigers and bears. <laughs> oh my, thank you so much, tiger and wolf and bear, for your interviews. Oh, it's so interesting learning so much about our favorite friends. Anyway, 
Thank you all who have participated in teaching us about this week's holidays. Oh, I can't wait to celebrate, especially World Coconut Day and National Beach Day, <laughs> National Lemon Juice Day. You I could do without. I don't get it. I don't get it. Huh. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Jean Newsletter. Toodaloo. <laughs>